Hey now, today I'm going to be making a spent grain sourdough. Uh, this is the first time I've done it. It's crazy because I, uh, I've been brewing for like 12 years and as of today I've um, been making sourdough for six years. I'm not sure how it hasn't just come together prior to this. However, today is the day. Um, now, starting off here is going to be super simple. I'm just using um, some all-purpose unbleached flour here and I'm making a single loaf, so I'm going with 500 grams. I'm going to go with a 75% hydration, so that's 375 grams of just filtered water. I'm gonna mix it up all nicely. Spent grains are not going in yet. I just want this to go through a little auto lease here for um, probably an hour, hour and a half. We'll see just based on how long it takes for my leaven to be ready to go. It's currently in the incubator doing its thing. Um, so I'm just going to mix this up for a couple of minutes and once it's fully incorporated, I'm just going to cover it up with some plastic and let it sit until uh, it is time to mix in the leaven. All right, so after an hour of Autolise, I pulled up my leaven. You can see it right here. It's definitely nice and poofy and ready to go. If you want to check out my video on how I like to make that, uh, absolutely do so. So now I'm going to be adding 25% uh, leaven to this. In this case, it's uh, 125 grams. Just need to get this in here. It's nice, poofy, totally ready to go. And per exactly 125, amazing. Okay, so just wetting my hands with some filtered water so that this doesn't get quite as sticky uh, on me. I'm just going to incorporate it here. It'll take a couple of minutes to get that all mixed in, and then I'm going to uh, take a look at it here again. Well, there we are, all nicely mixed up. So like I said, uh, I'm just gonna cover it up, give it another half hour, and then it's time to mix in the salt and the spent grain. So and there's my daughter who's very excited about the sour. Yeah! Okay, so here we are after half an hour of hanging out like that. Uh, now it's time to add, first of all, the salt. I'm going with 1.8% salt, so in this case that means 9 grams. Just going to sprinkle it on. And then, finally, we get to add the spent grains to the spent grain sourdough. So these are grains that came out of a hoppy wheat ale that I did. Actually, I recorded that. If you want to check out my video on that, please do so. Um, as it was, I just scooped them out of the mash tun after it was drained and um, actually um, threw them in a Ziploc bag and froze them. And then I just brought them out to thaw last night. And they seem to be totally fine. They still smell a little sweet. And I'm very excited to see what they do for this particular bread. So I'm just going to add them in now. And I wanted to do it now as opposed to during the lamination or anything like that, uh, which I won't be doing with this bread, um, because I thought this would be a good way to really incorporate them all the way through the dough as much as possible, very much simulating sort of like a, a seed or a grain bread like that. So. I'm just going to try not to spill any more on the floor and mix it up for a few minutes and we'll take a look at it after that. All right, there we are, fully incorporated. Uh, yeah, I spent about three minutes mixing that up. So now I'm just going to cover it back up, give it a half hour, and then we will stretch and fold. All right, so after that half hour, I'm just going to do a quick stretch and fold here. So I'm going to stretch it way up. Probably just four of them. It's a small loaf. Ooh, a little sticky. All right, so I'm going to again cover it up, give it a half hour, and we'll come back. All right, so 30 minutes later, I am going to do one more stretch and fold. Uh, I want to just build some nice strength in this. Uh, after which, I will cover it up and give it another half hour, and then we will coil fold. All right, so now I'm just going to give it a coil fold. And this will likely be the only coil fold that I do. I'm pretty sure um, after this, I'm just going to let it sit probably around half an hour. Um, and hopefully at that point, this will be uh, fermented and uh, ready to pre-shape. So we gave it about 40 minutes after that singular uh, coil fold there. And it's looking pretty good, ready to rock. So what I'm going to do here is just give it a little uh, pre-shape. Just dusting my hands with some flour. Let me get it out here. Kind of see how it's behaving. It's a little sticky, but it's not too bad to work with. Tighten it up just a little bit like that. I'm gonna pop it over here. I'll probably give it only about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll do the final shape. All right, we gave her 10 minutes to just kind of rest out here. Some of that rice flour that was in my banneton got on there, but that's totally fine. I'm just gonna give it a final shaping here. Tighten it up just a little bit. And then I've got my banneton here, and it's already got Nice little bit of rice flour in it, but I always give this just a little extra dusting just to help prevent some sticking. And we'll uh, pop that in there. 
I'll cover it up with some plastic, reaching across and into the fridge overnight and we will bake in the morning. All right, so morning of the bake, I've got the oven preheated and the cast iron at 500 degrees for an hour now. And I'm just going to get it in. So a little bit more flour on here. And we will just do a little strong pattern on here. And a little over here. And the girls are fighting. <laughs> Welcome to Saturday morning. And just that into there. I'm going to cover it up. I'm going to drop the temperature down to 440 degrees and give it half an hour. Alright, time to pop these lids off here. And then I'm going to reduce the temperature down to 430 and give it uh, probably 20-25 minutes or so. Okay, so after 22 minutes at 430 Fahrenheit, I'm going to pop this out here and let it kind of rest and cool down for a couple hours before slicing into it. Well, as always, it is moment of truth time. Let's slice into this. Got a really nice rise on this bread. Very excited about that. So just taking a look at the interior here. Fairly even crumb. Look at that. Beautiful. And you can just tell it's it's really quite moist. And I'm gonna have myself a little breakfast right now, I think. So let's just see how this tastes. Mmm, beautiful moist, just the I think barest hint of sweetness coming out of uh, those spent grains. The spent grains themselves do just kind of taste like seeds. Um, in the bread, but but soft and not not super crunchy. But yeah, this is absolutely beautiful. So yeah, if uh, you have access to cement grains or if you homebrew or anything like that, and and simply have more than you know what to do with, this is a super solid way to use them to enhance your bread. Um, yeah, and just give it a whole other cool fun dimension. So yeah, till next time, keep bread eleven.